Last week we spoke about being in touch with your, the essence of who we are, having a deep sense of self-awareness, and that becomes the foundation for our ability to have a Muna, a Muna in ourselves, a Muna in Hashem. First, we have to have what we, the Sforam HaKadoshim call Havaya, which means a deep understanding of your existence, that you exist, that you come from Hashem, and that deep down you're very, very good and very, very holy, and there's a perfection in you. That's something that we said you can know for sure. Everybody that's looking for the truth can find evidence that you exist. Um, the next step was Amuna. Amuna is something that you don't have evidence for. Amuna is belief. It's faith. That means that whenever there's two, at least two things and you're not a hundred percent sure which one is right, which decision is the right one, which one isn't the right one, you have to have a moon and you have to have belief when you're choosing. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is today talk about how we're going to be able to connect, first of all, to Amuna and to be, because Amuna is being able to have faith in things outside of ourselves, to be able to have faith in this world, to be able to have faith in the, uh, in people, uh, in events, in Hashem and so on. We're going to see that in order to be able to connect to anything outside of ourselves, as well as to connect to what's into ourselves, we need pleasure. We need what's called Onig. We have to be able to connect with simcha, with a type of delight, a type of onig, a tonic, if you will, in Hebrew. And this feeling, this good feeling of being able to connect with pleasure to things in the world and things in ourselves, this is um, something that a lot of people don't do. In other words, the, we're going to see that the real pleasure in life is not, it, it's is, is a pleasure of connecting and becoming more whole, becoming more bishlamis. Most of the time that we are, people are seeking pleasure, everybody's seeking pleasure, but it's short-lived pleasure. It's the pleasure of the body. It's not a pleasure of, that's coming deep from the soul, from the desires of the soul. And therefore the pleasure um, doesn't connect us to ourselves and doesn't connect us to Hashem and doesn't connect us in our relationships either. It's a pleasure that actually disconnects us and makes us more separate from ourselves, separate from people, separate from Hashem, unfortunately. So what we're doing here is we're changing, in a sense, the definition of pleasure. Real pleasure, according to the Torah definition of pleasure, is Shlemus, it's completeness. It's being able to take the scattered parts of ourselves and unite them, and the bond, the glue that unites us is a type of pleasure, if you will. It's an onig, it's a delight. So um, the scattered parts of ourselves could be the thoughts that are going in different directions, the different types of emotions that come and go so quickly in us, the changing events that are going on outside of us, all of the disparate parts of us can be united and glued together with a feeling of uh, what Rabbi Nachman calls simcha, of pleasure, of joy, of happiness. It's not necessarily the type of happiness that uh, you have on Purim when you're jumping and singing and dancing, but it is a type of contentment, a type of positive experience that is uh, very necessary. After all, we can't live without a sense of pleasure, a sense of vitality. We spoke about this to some extent last week. Today we're going to take it even further by showing how this uh, quality of pleasure um, 
can either be focused on what's really important in life or what can we can have the will to focus it on what's important or the will unfortunately to focus it on unimportant things this idea of will this idea of ratzon is something that's also um, like your very existence like your very amuna like your capacity for pleasure it's part of you it's part of your nature it's part of your nature to experience, to be able to experience yourself in a very deep level. It's a v- part of your nature to be ex- able to experience great pleasure from yourself. And it's part of your natural uh, quality to you um, to be able to have faith and to believe and have the will to believe in the good side of you, in your goodness, in your abilities, in you know, doing things lishma for the sake of God, for the sake of the Torah, for the sake of the Jewish people. So today we're going to start now, actually, by talking about your ratzon, your ability to um, think in a in a positive way, um, rather than thinking uh, to to every time we're always willing something. We have desires for all kinds of things. Will you might also say is desire. Okay, so what is it that you desire, you know? Is it when you do something, are you doing it for yourself or you're doing it for somebody else? Well, the truth is you're doing probably both. We know that we're not yet completely worked out perfect people. So we're not completely uh, selfless, not yet. Um, So we don't let that discourage us, though. We know that, again, there is this deeper part of us that is selfless and wants to do what's best for your wife, what's best for your children. And that part, as you learn to cultivate and believe that it's there more and more, then you're going to be able to make that your primary way of feeling about yourself. Your self-esteem is going to grow stronger based upon the idea that this is true, that if you're connecting your will, you're connecting your will to believe in your selflessness, to you, to the essence of who you are, to your inner perfection, which is something that comes from Hashem, then it's going to become your primary way of feeling about yourself, and it's going to, get, it's going to fill you with the positive emotions, and it's going to make you feel confident and sure of yourself in all situations. And even if you veer off the uh, the positive track, you can come back to it by always taking a few deep breaths and breathing for a few minutes with that idea that you do have an inner perfection, that you are a chelik elokai mamal, you're a piece of Hashem in this world, you are a, you are a a a a limb of Hashem in this world. So by coming back. Many times, and repeating it over and over again, telling yourself, yes, I am a part of Hashem in this world. I am a part of Hashem in this world. I do have a very positive side. I do have good intentions. I do want to, um, I want to, uh, connect to pleasure in a proper, proper ways and not in improper ways. By repeating this over and over to yourself, thousands of times, it becomes like we said, that drop of water that we learn about in relation to Rabbi Akiva, where that steady drop of rainwater was able to hollow out the rock, and in the same way, this hollows out the, softens the heart. The heart of stone becomes a heart of flesh, and you can then begin to look at yourself in a softer, more gentle way. You can begin to look at yourself and believe in yourself that you are not just simply a personality. You're not just simply a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a person. You're actually much more than just being a person or a human or a particular nationality or a particular race. You are beyond that. You transcend that. You are a spiritual being. And we need to, many times a day, 
uh, remind ourselves that our true identity is that we are a real spiritual being. Now, the only way to really get that idea deep into your mind and into yourself is to set your watch or set your, set your uh, alarm for every 15 minutes and remind yourself, have a reminder that every 15 minutes you have, you're going to think about who you really are. And you're going to separate yourself from the external, you're going to remove the garment of yourself, which is sometimes the negative ways you think and the negative ways you behave. And you're going to, every 15 minutes, you're going to take that garment off, so to speak, and just look at the you, the bare soul, the who you really are, which Hashem himself testifies that you're very, very, very good, that you're very well-meaning. You know, people tell me, people who lose control of themselves, who don't always speak nicely to other people, who, who might be very critical of other people, they tell me that um, in their quiet moments, they, they don't know why they do it. They, and they don't feel good about it. Why? Because they know that that's not who they really are. They know deep down that at those moments they've lost themselves. They're not connecting and relating well to other people because they are not connected to their own selves. And, uh, in those quiet moments they can reconnect and they, and they, and, and, and we, we, we talk about, you know, how to do that and how to reconnect and, and the person comes out with a, a stronger commitment because they've connected with that pleasure of connect. It's a pleasure. It is, it is, it is a very, very awesome pleasure to connect to yourself, to connect to that good part of yourself. What Rabbi Nachman called the Nakuda Tov. When you connect to the Nakuda Tov in yourself, it puts you in a very happy mood. And then the outer uh, misbehaviors uh, that we engage in, they tend to get nullified. They tend to get, um, they, they don't need to be analy overly analyzed or overly understood even. In, they just need to be, you just need to connect to the deep part of you, to the pleasure in you, and it shines out, it radiates out, and takes care of the outer layers of your soul that need some uh, some fixing. The outer layers of your soul are called the children. And when the children are acting up, instead of giving giving them a big sermon, instead of giving them a lot of, a big lecture, turn away, you know, roll your eyes, and realize this is the way kids are sometimes. And you go into the parent, which is the inner part of your soul. And you go into that parent's inner part of your soul, which is a wise, knowing part of you. The part that Hashem created to be perfect. When we say that the soul is perfect, we're talking about that inner parent part of the soul that's perfect. That's what we say every morning when we say, that Hashem created it pure and perfect, that's that inner parent part of your soul. Um, you got to know it's there, and you got to feel, you got to spend time every day just feeling it, being aware of it, breathing with the, the reality of that you do possess a soul, and you possess a precious possession, a soul that is, um, it's the only thing that's going to always be with you. The soul goes with you, after this life, and it's uh, it's really all we take with us. It's the old. It's, it's 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 the essence of who you are. So, you get into that idea of stopping every 10, 15 minutes, and breathing for at least a minute or so with a recognition of who you really are, and making that connection. That's connecting with pleasure to the real soul. Then we said we have. The ability to have amuna. Amuna is the, is 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 believing that everything that Hashem does 
is is for the good that everything is coming from Hashem and everything Hashem is is that every Hashem, thing Hashem is doing, He's doing for the good. You you know. So now you have a Muna. Okay. Now if you have a Muna, um, then you don't ever have to get angry. Okay. Each of these things work on the other. For example, if how is it that you don't have to get angry? Well, if you have a Muna, then you're going to always question. Uh, if something is upsetting you, you're going to say, where is that thing coming from? You know, let's say somebody is rude, somebody insults you, okay? Chas v'shom, but it happens. If you say to yourself that, ah, that's coming from Hashem, right? And Hashem, everything that Hashem does, Hashem is doing for the best. So I don't know exactly how this guy yelling at me is for my best. I don't know it yet. But with the Muna, I want to believe that that's the truth. Okay. So then right away, it takes away my anger because I know that, okay, this guy, he may not be acting in a nice way. And he's probably he's certainly going to get punished for that. But that's his problem, right? My reaction to him is that's my that's my avoda. That's my, that's the work I have to, that's a, that, that's the test that I'm getting. So in order to, so the way you can pass that test is to realize that it's coming from Hashem. Once you realize it's coming from Hashem, if you've worked hard on the previous steps that we've been speaking about in previous weeks and you now have a solid idea that Hashem is good and that Hashem is doing things all the time, out of a, 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 a out of a desire to bestow goodness on you and on the world, then it's easy for, to go from there to realizing, okay, there's no one to be angry here at here. There's only Hashem, and Hashem is doing this to teach me something. Ah, this is an opportunity that Hashem is giving me to learn something. So it dissipates. It dissipates the anger. Now, um, another way of looking at, uh, another way that we deal with anger and all types of other negative emotions is by realizing that in this perfect part of you, Hashem has put a love for uh, what we call a Havas Yisrael. You have a love for the Jewish people, you have a, and you have a love for humanity. You have a love for the world in general. That's a part of who you are because you're a part of Hashem and He loves everybody. He loves the whole world. So when you're connecting to that part of yourself, you can access that love. You can access that feeling that uh, you care about everybody and then it shines out onto the people in your life and it, it becomes a part of the way you, you think and the way you feel and ultimately the, the way you uh, relate to other people. We have to connect these things in our minds. It's internal mental work, but this is the only way to glue all these pieces of ourselves together um, and have a united self. This is one way of thinking about self-love, which is you know, the basis of our self-esteem, which is that you're a united self, right? Ahava is the same, in, means love in Hebrew, and it's the same numerical value as echad, which is me, meaning one. So a tr so the true pleasure is in, is in being connected with yourself, loving yourself, and then you can love others, okay? Now, you have to have a will to believe these things. Getting back to Ratzon, we have to have a will and a desire to believe these things. So any time that you are believing it, be aware that you're believing it, and that cements it, it makes it, it makes it even stronger. Okay. Um, so you have to search within yourself um, very, very often, um, many times every day, you have to search for, for that I within yourself, for that real you, 
and to be able to feel the inherent pleasure that is there. Sometimes people say to me, I don't, well, I don't know what you, I don't know what you mean. I mean, I know who I am. But the truth is that most people don't really know who they are, um, on a deep level. And they don't take time to really feel it. To really let that awareness just wash through you. And when you do that, that's when you get this, that's when you get the experience. That's when you get the, 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 the feeling. As we've said, ta'amu ura'u ki tov Hashem. Taste and see how good Hashem is. First, you have to taste and then you can see Hashem. Remember that this part of you transcends everything that you can experience even with your senses. What you can see and you feel and hear. Okay, these things are always subject to distortions, right? After all, we know that by the Chet HaEgel, when the Jewish people made the golden calf, they thought that Moshe Rabbeinu was nifter, that he was not alive, because the devil, the Sutton, fooled them and made them see him um, in that state. We can never fully trust what we see and what we think and what we feel. We can never fully trust our perceptions of other people um, unless we have a muna. Okay? We want to have a muna for the good. Okay? We don't want to let people take advantage of us. It's no mitzvah to allow ourselves to be abused, chas v'shalom, or manipulated. But a person um, who is anchored securely in his real self, in his soul, is um, not going to be manipulated and is, is, is much more immune and has a very strong defense um, against, <clears throat> you know, uh, influences that are not koshi. He can just smell, he can smell a problem a mile away. Um, but nevertheless, even though um, he has that ability, he, when, he, when he's trusting people and he's um, believing that uh, things are going to work out in a good way, he doesn't know for sure vada. He doesn't know uh, in the same way that uh, he knows that he exists. He knows with Amuna, which is a different way of knowing. It's, it's, an, it's, it's not the ordinary way of knowing that we know in this world. And when a person enters into that, um, starts to live life with the Muna, it's, it's, not, um, it's not that he uh, has some kind of uh, new tool now that can enable him to, to just be happier or feel better. He's actually entering into a new world. He's acting, he's entering into a whole new, entirely different world, an entirely different life. Because now when he has a Muna, he's in, a, you know, he can deal with his uh, emotions and he can deal with his relationships, um, in a way that he, he could never, he, he could never do before. He's, now he can pray. When you have a Muna, now when you have belief, um, you can you can have the will to believe in your own prayers and to believe in the power of your own prayers. This is another world. The world of tefillah, the world of amuna, is a completely, completely different world. Um, and the more one becomes immersed in this world, uh, the more it's 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 you can you can see <laughs> uh, you can see things happening that you wouldn't see happen before. You can t take uh, two people who are um, separated and uh, and uh, not speaking to each other for a long time and uh, on the verge of, God forbid, uh, ending a marriage. Um, nevertheless, when, uh, when one person begins to communicate from a soul level, begins to really speak, from the real self, and it really, it will resonate in a way to the partner 
that is a completely and entirely different, it's like you're hearing a different person. You're hearing now the spouse that you, you really thought deep down that you were marrying. You're, you're, you're relating to that person that you really hoped and believed was really there, but somehow never showed up or never surfaced um, uh, as much as you thought uh, he would after the wedding. Well, it's a big, big, amazing aha for people to realize, no, that person's soul is still there. It's just been covered up and covered up, but now we're revealing it and letting it out, and it speaks differently, and it looks different, and, uh, and, and, and it relates differently, and it has different opinions and different priorities. And, you know, now all of a sudden the children are much more of a priority and the wife is more of a priority and work is less of a priority. Uh, and now instead of, um, you know, learning, uh, you know, 15 minutes a day, uh, you know, a guy might be learning four hours a day, you know, which is not something that everybody can do. But if a person has the time, it's, it's um, learning Torah is is uh, there's there's no better way of connecting to Hashem of having that devakus with Hashem and with your own soul than uh, than learning the 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 Torah Hakadosh the Holy Torah. So um, so things can change and things can change quickly once we get in touch with the inner layer, the parent of the soul, as you as we said. So. Um, Let's just skip ahead now. Okay, so we have to, as we said, we have to have the desire for the wholeness. You know, the wholeness of a person being whole and not being scattered, as we said, is the, um, that is the, the pleasure, the real pleasure of, of being alive. Okay? Um, the Chavos Chalavavos, a famous Jewish ethical work um, says, uh, may Hashem uh, save you from a scattered soul. When we're scattered and divided in a million pieces, we can't have simcha. We can't be happy. We need to be together. We need to be whole. You know, uh, the holistic movement um, is... Uh, was probably a you know an attempt to uh, work with this with this basic idea, but there are significant differences between the way we seek to be whole and way uh, humanitarian, so-called uh, uh, humanistic uh, psychology uh, uh, tries to help people uh, to be whole, or mindfulness. Uh, Mindfulness meditation, uh, yes, it's good to be mindful and to be, but, but we're talking about not, we're talking about more than just being focused or concentrated on one thing. You know, we're not talking, we're not, we're, we're talking about being, having the different parts of ourselves glued together and having this almost constant awareness <coughs> of this inner goodness that is you, the, the real I, your essence. Um, so, this was the, uh, why do people want to return back to a sense of wholeness? Because that was how you started out. You were created whole, and then because of difficulty of life and tests in this world, you lost um, wholeness, we all have to some extent, and uh, we developed um became more separate and more fragmented. So we desire to return back to that, that feeling of wholeness because that was how you were originally created. So, um, you know, things tend to want to return back to their natural state. Um, now, this this, so, so what we're saying here is, is, is a very deep thing, that 
We said before that there's something that's very good and kind about you. There's very, something very selfless about you that you want to give unconditionally. And that wish, that, does, that it's not a wish, but that nature that you have to want to give unconditionally is, is, is not to get anything back. It's, be, it's part of your nature. You know, just like it's the nature of, uh, you know, that gravity is part of nature. Uh, it's part of your nature to give and to want to do good things. Um, you know, p- part of your nature is to be essentially like an angel and just do the will of Hashem, just do what Hashem wants. Okay, we are not, uh, we're not at that level and, um, and we probably can't reach that level in this lifetime, but we know that it's there and it helps to infuse all of our thoughts and our, our intentions and, 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 and we do the best we can. We give ourselves a break. We, we think, you know, we think the best of ourselves. And by the way, we're talking about loving ourselves and being good to ourselves. But the purpose of this is ultimately to be able to love and be good to other people. Because we have to start with ourselves in order to be able to let it shine out on others. If you find all this great goodness, this treasury of, of goodness in yourself, then you're going to automatically see that it exists in other people. Then other people are going to become to you more significant than they ever were. You're going to value them more. You're going to appreciate them more. You're going to, um, uh, to recognize them more because you're recognizing that you have these inner qualities and therefore they also must have these inner qualities, even if they're not always acting nicely, even if they're, you know, uh, on the outside, not so nice at all. Um, so this also can apply to situations that we're in. Let's say a person's got a job that he doesn't like, and there's no other jobs, but so he has to accept, he has to deal with his job, he's going to job every day, um, and if he doesn't have an inner connection to pleasure and to himself and to Amunar and to Hashem, he's just going to look at this as a, a drudgery. It's going to be very hard for him to continue. It might even affect his mood and take away all the, you know, his daily pleasure. But if he has this inner source of pleasure that he can draw upon, if he has this feeling of Amunar that there's much more to life than this job, and okay, he's going to stick it out because it's the responsible thing to do until he has something better. But now, this pleasure that he has shines out on the situation and makes the situation look different. It's not the same situation it was before. It's a situation where now he sees the goodness of, Hashem, goodness of Hashem, the gift of Hashem, which is a situation that triggers him to go more inside himself and draw out more and more of the internal pleasure that he can get from himself. The idea is that we don't have to be dependent on getting pleasure from the world, that we can get pleasure from ourselves. Yes, things in the world can give us pleasure. Um, our children can give us pleasure. There's a lot of things that can give us pleasure. But um, we don't, be, we, don't we, we, we work on becoming less and less dependent on it. It's not our main source of our pleasure. The main source of our pleasure is our connection with Hashem and our holy neshamas. And that's the shefa, the good stuff that's coming down the pipe all the time that we're breathing in all day long. By the way, breathing is a good way of remembering your connection to your soul and to Hashem. So train yourself to think about your breathing. Um, The best way to do that is to take time each day during your personal prayer to think about your breathing and to be aware of your, that Hashem is actually the one that's breathing you. And you think about that, um, it stays with you. So, um, very good. Um, okay, so we're talking about your true kindness. Um, you know, nobody can, nobody, as we said, nobody can do completely, uh, com- be completely kind, you know. Um, 
And if you look for the negatives in yourself, it's, uh, it's very easy to find them. But we have to train ourselves to let that go and then look for the good. You know, can't say that, uh, can't say it enough. Yeah, we have to look for the good. Um, I have to focus on it. Um, now, sometimes you're, you're just, uh, you know, sitting around and, uh, you're not necessarily doing anything that seems like it's really bad, but I don't know, you're sitting and you're watching, uh, you're watching something or you're eating something or you're listening to music or whatever, you, whatever it is you're doing. Um, and you're just focusing on your pleasure. Um, well, that, if we're just taking pleasure for pleasure itself, then it's a problem, you know? The idea here is connecting. Link, it, link the pleasure that you're getting always to something else. If you're getting pleasure from some type of an alcoholic drink, let's say you like to drink wine when you have your Shabbos Suda. Okay, so have wine with your Shabbos Suda, but don't just... If you're just drinking the wine, oh, this is a great wine, it tastes so good, it's so delicious, you know, uh, and you look at where it was grown and uh, you just, re you know, that's pleasure for the sake of pleasure. But if you connect in your mind that the wine should help you to be able to serve Hashem better or should give you more of an Oynig Shabbos, more of a delight from being with your family um, and spending quality time with your children, if the wine is going to help you to be able to sit down and um, connect better with your son or your daughter, or do or do the homework together, then you then you then you're connecting it. Then then you if you're more relaxed as a result of eating something delicious, and that relaxation is now going to be enable you to uh, think about it that it's that it's going to help you to bind and connect to a guest that's sitting at your table, and now you can speak to that person in a better way. Now, another thing that we do, another um, quality of the soul that's very important that we have to talk about is, is, is your chachma, right? Everybody has, has wisdom. And you were created, asher yatzeb chachma, everybody, you know, that means that you were created with wisdom. And it, uh, it doesn't only refer to the fact that your whole body was made with a, you know, amazing wisdom, but it means, it means that your mind too and your thought processes have the capacity to be extremely organized and to be able to, um, uh, provide you with very deep insights um, into uh, the meaning of things, into what you should do, into decisions you should make, um, um, into uh, ways of looking at things in positive ways. Okay, see how these interact, because you need wisdom to be able to find the goodness in yourself. Okay, sometimes it's not apparent right away, so. You have to take time to think about it and sort of dwell on the idea. You might get a spark of an idea about, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, what, what, what's good about you. And then you, you dwell on that thought about what's good about you until all of a sudden it starts to fill out and you realize, oh, I'm good in this way and I'm good in that way and I'm good in that way. I speak to people who initially may not be able to even tell me what they think is good about themselves. And then as they focus on it longer, they're able to write down many, many different things. It begins to flow. Um, another, so, so, so Chachma is the beginning of your intelligence. It's that sense that, you know, you have a, a flash of insight. You have an understanding. Let, okay. Um, let's, for example, um, the family wants to decide where to go on Pesach. Where are you going to go on Cholomoed, on the intermediary days? And you get a thought, um, all of a sudden, that you should take the children and the, fa and the wife and go away. All of a sudden, that thought came to you. It didn't get stimulated by any outside uh, event. Or, or it just came right from Hashem. came right into your mind. Ha, got to go, got to plan a trip. Okay. So now you, you, 
but you have no idea where you're going. Well, that idea that you want to plan a trip, that's your wisdom. So now you got to breathe with it. You got to stay with it. You got to think about it. You got to let it percolate. A lot of people just skip over it too fast and that's it. They, they might even forget that they had the idea to plan a trip and never plan one. But if to be sensitive and to be living, you know, with, uh, in a whole way, living glued together type of way, then you're going to take a minute and you're going to think, okay, got to plan a trip. Want to plan a trip. Hashem, want, you want me to plan a trip. You want me to plan a trip. And you keep waiting until that dot of wanting to, expands into sort of a plane. Now you may see, okay, there's, uh, there's Hebron and there's Tavaria and there's Maron and there's the amusement park and there's going to grandma's house. All, and these things start to form in your mind. But then you're still not done. Then what you have to do is you have to take that plane of thought that you just developed and you have to make it three dimensional. How are you going to do that? Well, you're going to ask yourself, Okay, let's say it's going to be going to grandma's house. Okay, so when, now fill in the details. When are we going to go to grandma's house? And how are we going to get there? And who's going to come with us? And, uh, what are we going to, what are we, do we want to bring anything with us? And what are we going to, what would we like to do when we get there? And all of these details now flesh it out. And that's called your bina. That's called contemplating and thinking about um, something that Hashem told you, give you an idea, and now you're expanding it and uh, making it operable, making it something that you're going to do. So, um, it's interesting that this idea that, has, that everything that, you know, things that just come from Hashem, um, that aren't coming from any other uh, place, right? That you just all of a sudden get this idea. Um, this is really the basis of what uh, um, uh, the tzaddikim experienced when they had Ruach HaKodesh, when they had a divine inspiration. That Hashem would just, from nowhere, Hashem would just plant into their mind a certain idea. Um, this, in, a, in a much, this we're talking about in a much, much less uh, uh, intense capacity, it almost, almost, uh, almost not the same thing, but it does have a certain common re- relationship to it. Your neshama is filled with a lot of very hidden wisdom. And if you take time to be with your neshama, to be with your soul, you will get a flow of deep Wisdom. The deeper you can go into yourself, the deeper the thought processes you're going to have are going to be. Uh, and you're going to be thinking big, strong thoughts, thoughts that uh, uh, will reflect your greater understanding of life and of yourself and of other people. So slow down, breathe deeply, get into... Uh, into yourself and explore these different aspects of of yourself that you exist that you have a muna um, that you have pleasure you have the capacity for joy and pleasure and that you have a a desire you have a, a kosher desire um, most of all to be connected to yourself because then you can be connected to Hashem we can't connect to Hashem so easily when we're in pieces. We have to glue ourselves together with kosher pleasure. Uh, and then we can be there for Hashem and for our families, for the people who are important to us in life. Um, you know, a person can uh, uh, have an experience with uh, a carpenter or an electrician. That could end in uh, a, a, could be a very disappointing or very um, you know challenging experience, um, and then go through this process and realize, okay, it's from Hashem, 
So there was a financial loss, or now there's an inconvenience. We have to get someone else to come do the job because this guy didn't do it right. Um, t- with your wisdom, you can then, and your, and your, your ability to, with your bina, with your ability to contemplate, you can then think about that situation. That situation came to you not just for one reason, not just so that you could forgive the electrician and that you could see that this is coming from Hashem, but that you could use that. Now you can expand it to how you're going to be able to forgive your wife or your kids or your husband right before Passover when there's a lot of preparation and there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of stuff going on. And there's going to inevitably be some disappointments and there's going to be some things that don't go right. Um, you know, you go to the store and you get everything on the list and then you come back and you realize you forgot something, you know, or they ran out of things at the store, they didn't have enough, you know, or somebody breaks something uh, and now it's, maybe it's too late to get it replaced right before the holiday. We have to be able to look past it and understand that everything that we learn can be used somehow in every, in every other way. And that all of these parts of ourselves that we're talking about so far are included in every other part. Right? So, 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 uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about chesed, for example. We're going to talk, when we get to talking about kindness, you know, we're going to see and we, that, that in kindness is a desire to be kind. And, 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 and that in, uh, in, you know, in strength, there is a type of kindness. And in kindness is a type of strength that everything has its, that it is, is interrelated. Now, in order to, access all of your wisdom and really be able to uh, not only uh, create new ideas and develop new ideas, although that's essentially what we're talking about here, is to be able to see things in fresh new ways and be able to get positive new ways of th- thinking about things. The way we do it is we have to make room for that. We have to sort of, we have to have a way of emptying our minds so that Hashem can put something new in. You know, it's just like if you were going to be building a, a building, you have to lay a, found, a foundation, and that means you have to dig a big hole in the ground and put, a, put that foundation into it. Okay, so the bigger the hole, the bigger the foundation that you can put in, and the more secure the structure will be that you build on top of it. Our sages tell us that every day we're born anew, we're brand new people, and um, and yet most of us don't really appreciate how new we are, and we just go along like, you know, we're the same people that we were yesterday. You're a Bria Chadasha, you're a brand new person. When you wake up in the morning, uh, that means that in some ways you have to forget now about the uh, all the negativity that came before, uh, you're not forgetting completely, you know, because you want to remember, we always want to learn from our mistakes. We're not, you know, we're not, we don't want to be foolish. But we want to forget about the negativity, the things that were bothering us, the things that were bothering us so much about other people that blocked our souls and blocked our goodness and blocked us from being able to be the best people that we can be. So, we wake up and we try to turn away we start with the good and that's that fresh new you now if you have to um, during the day you have you're at work or you're in a situation where you have to make a decision um, how do you make that decision how do you get a wise decision how do you know what's coming from Hashem and what's not coming from Hashem you need to stop and take a few deep breaths. You need to be able to go into yourself, to go into this inner world that we're talking about, this world of Amuna, this world of inner peace, connecting to your essence, and <clears throat> just blank out everything. 
You need to just be able to, to, to quiet the, the thoughts in the mind, to be able to, to, to put the children to sleep. As we said, the outer, noisier parts of ourselves, those are the children, the inner side, the inner you, that's the parent. The parent now puts the children to sleep and just thinks of nothing. And when you just think and you breathe with that awareness of nothing, then you're going to get an influx of ideas. Then what's going to come to you is going to be very, very deep and very, very meaningful, and it's going to be coming from Hashem. You'll know that it's coming from Hashem because when you, when you, when you, when you blank yourself out, when you, when you think of a, a blank screen, for example, when you have no thought, um, and you're just thinking of nothing, and you're just in that patient waiting stage, that amuna phase, where you're just trusting that something good is going to come into your mind, and you're going to know what to do. You know, you're going to know what, what, what the right decision is. That's coming from Hashem, because the, really, we can't imagine what Hashem is, can we? We can't fill in a, a screen, you know, we can't paint Hashem on a canvas. The only, the, the only thing we can know about Hashem is that He exists, um, and we can know what He isn't. We can know that Hashem isn't anything that's physical that we can see in this world. And therefore, if you think of nothing, then you're thinking, you're, you're thinking is almost close to be thinking about Hashem, because that's the way we can experience Hashem, that we can experience that Hashem is like, is nothing like anything that we know about. Hashem is nothing like anything that we can sense with our our senses. He's not, not like anything we can hear or feel or taste or smell or touch. Hashem is beyond, beyond all of these things. So you want to get wisdom from, from Hashem? You want to get, you want to know what Hashem thinks you should do? Just go into a quiet state of contemplation, meditation, and just empty, empty yourself, empty your mind from thoughts and Hashem will fill in the vacuum. Hashem will, the Shekhinah will come in to your brain uh, and give you the ideas. This is really how Hashem gives you creative new ideas. This is how Hashem created the world to begin with. We know from the Kabbalah that Hashem created a space. He had to, we don't understand exactly what this means, but Hashem created a space in order to create the world. And he created also a space in your mind where he can put into your mind your ability to do all of these things that we're talking about today, to be able to have the free will, which is in a sense separate from him, hard to understand that also because everything's connected to Hashem, but Hashem creates a space in your mind where he gives you that ability to be able to do your own thing. And uh, if you choose, and you choose to believe that, you're gonna, you can choose to be, in a sense, like Hashem Himself, and empty your mind, just like Hashem emptied Himself. He made a space in the world. He took Himself and sort of uh, contracted Himself, so to speak, and made a space to create everything. You contract yourself. You you contract your thoughts. Stop thinking for a while. Stop. Uh, um, having to know, having to be right, having to have your opinion. Let go of your opinions. Let go of your knowledge. Let go of you of, of what you think. And then Hashem can give you a new, fresh, different way of looking at the situation. That's how people change in, in, in marital relationships, is that they come back to the relationship. We teach people how to look at things in a fresh new way. Yes, okay, there's a lot of water under the bridge, there's a lot of stuff that happened. Um, we have to now look at that as something that had to happen. We, we learn to look at the, the past with the Muna. We don't understand why it happened that way, but with the Muna we know it, it had to happen. Now let's clear the decks. And people begin to uh, have a new, fresh way of looking at each other and enjoying each other and starting again. This is his, his starting again is another aspect. So we have, we're not, we're not up to that yet. Um, but beginning anew is, is something that is again natural to you. It's just like water flows, uh, like uh, birds fly. 
you know, uh, you can start again. These things are inherently part of you. Okay, um, so we are going to stop here. Um, good luck and lots of bracha and hatzlacha in uh, working on these things. It takes work. These things don't come naturally. Um, and if you want to make these things really part of you and not just be ideas that, you know, interesting ideas that you're hearing about, but you really want to make it a part of you, you need to spend time every day thinking about them and internalizing them and wanting to want them. And then you'll see that Hashem will give you the schus, Hashem will give you the merit to be able to, to feel differently. And you'll notice that people will be reacting to you differently. And your relationships will be changing in qualitatively or quantitatively. And in that merit, you should have a Chag Kosh of Isameach. And we're going to see you next week for one more Shia. Only the Shia will not be on Wednesday. The Shia next week will be this time on Sunday. Yom Rishon on Sunday at 5 o'clock Israel time. Tune in. I'll put a note out on my blog or my Facebook just to remind you. It's Dr. Zev Ballin. We should all be zeicher to Chag Kosher V'Sameach and to the coming of the Geula Shalema B'mhev Yemenu. Amen. Thank you.